uh, what do you guys do? Who are you? What do you guys do? Hello, everyone. Finally, we've been trying to schedule this for the longest time. Hello to all the Coach Franco viewers and listeners out there. I am Lucky Alabado. I'm the founder of Discover Manila, a food, travel, and lifestyle blog based in the Philippines. And Franco and I, we've worked together in some travel videos. He's been one of our writers and mm-hmm. sobrang galing nito mag storytell and it's just about time na nakapag guest na rin ako finally sa podcast niya because we have so much to talk about. <laughs> Oo nga eh. Um, when, when it's speaking of the things that we did, we did Bacolod, we did Naga yes. and it opened my eyes to the entire totally different industry. I was totally, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not part of this. It's and I'm very thankful for the experience and everything that I learned from Discover MNL. And yun din eh. Kaya rin isip ko siya to have you over. Kasi parang it's, it's very interesting. I think it's it's something I don't know. Kaya rin at least for future creators, di ba? Future content creators, future uh, generations who want to be in this industry. So at least we get to tell your story and the process. The pro- for me, the most important part about everything is the process, what you learn from, from yes. it. Kasi yun yung hindi masyado pinag-uusapan ng tao eh. For Discover MNL, how did everything start? How did everything, how did it come about? Okay, so to begin, it was back in 2015. This was the year that, it was the Instagram era. It was just the start mm. of social media. Uh, people migrating from friends to multiply to Facebook. That was the year. Classic and then, you know, multiply. Yeah! <laughs> friends to multiply. Oh. <laughs> so it was the start of the Instagram era. Very raw, very real. People were people were hyped up about sharing their stories, sharing photos, and whatever they want online. So that was what happened to me. Because I'm the type of person, ever since I was in high school, I was in college, I would always take photos. I'm not a professional photographer to begin with. I just really like keeping memories for myself to look back to and to share with my friends. So that's really been my habit ever since. So when this Instagram era started, I had a personal page, of course. Everyone has. And I was, I felt like I was oversharing my life to my friends that I felt like I don't want them to, to kind of hate me for always posting. So I mm-hmm. wanted to divert the things that I want to share online in another platform or another channel. But back in 2015, there wasn't anything about bloggers and influencers, mm-hmm. content creators back then. It was merely just making an Instagram account. So that that was what I did. Yeah, just a page, just a random page. But in my mind, I did not want it to be me in front. So that's the reason why I named it Discover MNL or Discover Manila. Because initially, I wanted that to be my travel diary. My online, Mm. like my online diary of things, of food, of places that I want to visit or places that I've already visited. And I wanted to keep it anonymous from my personal life. Mm. So the time that I made the account, nobody knew it was me in the beginning. Like I did not post it on my Facebook wall telling friends, hey, I'm making this. Because I I actually don't know what it was before. But it was set Mm. on public. So when I started posting there, like the food that I've tried, yun, 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 and it was, um, the tonality of it was very, not a person talking, it was the page already talking. So people mm. thought back then that it was either from a publisher or it was a blogger. So people started following it just because they found the content relatable. And that's when I learned na, okay, so this is, or this can be a thing. But at, at that time, back in 2015, I had no idea how or like what it would grow to be. Back then, there were no like short courses. There were no podcasts about content creation, whatever. It was just something that I wanted to do. So that's really how it started. Very raw, very real, very spur of the moment kind of thing. During that time, when you create something, right, and you don't mm-hmm. put your face, you don't put your name on it, it adds to a level of mystery. And at the same time, yeah. people start thinking, Sino kaya yun? who's the person behind this? Right? People will be wondering, okay, this person's been, this person's probably eating a lot and going to places. Right? And 
the best part din talaga, the really good ones, the really good pages started off like that eh. Diba? Diba? Parang, mm-hmm. It was a suppository. It was, it was, parang ano na lang siya, parang random photo dump na ginawa mong maganda. It's that most of the time, it's where it started and then it evolved. It evolved yes. into, into something big. Speaking of the evolution of the page and wala pa siyang sense of direction, what was, mm-hmm. what was the crossroads? What was the fork where and you decided Na, and of course, if we're talking about 2015 onwards, people had a certain trajectory. Society will always have a certain trajectory for people. So it was always go graduate from school, get a job, have a hobby on the side diba, to keep you sane, and then have a family or diba, advance your career. Diba? This was the era of 2015 to probably yes. 2017. It was You probably chose a very unconventional path. So what was the crossroads or what was the fork wherein you decided, <laughs> I'm going to go all in on this. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to go all in on this. Super funny because that's exactly what situation I was in back then. Mm-hmm. I was kind of early in the quarter life crisis trend. I think mm-hmm. back then I was only like 22 or 23 when I started. And that was the moment in my life. I'm in a quarter where life crisis. You were 22. <laughs> 20. Yeah, medyo umaga, medyo early adapter. Maaga, medyo early adapter, early adapter, early adapter yeah. tayo. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. So that was the time I just graduated college. Then I was mm-hmm. so sure that I did not know what I wanted to be. Even if I graduated, mm-hmm. the course was... I, I took up um, BS Hotel Restaurant Management in Benilde. So that was what mm-hmm. I finished. When I finished... Just to give you like a more um, concrete backstory of how Discovery really started. So mm-hmm. when I graduated Hotel Restaurant Management, I worked abroad for a year. And I realized mm-hmm. I love it, but it's not something that I want to do. So when I came mm-hmm. back to the Philippines, I tried applying in entirely different industries. So my field would be hotel restaurant management. And you mm-hmm. know how people are here that when you chose a certain course, that's what you're supposed to do. Like to that's do. the uh-huh. job that you're supposed to apply for, right? So when mm-hmm. I came back, it was a little different. I wanted to experiment. So I started applying for a sales job, a marketing job, things that don't usually coincide with what I with, with the degree that mm. I had. But in my mind then, I just wanted to test out the water since I was really mm-hmm. in this part of life that I had zero clue. But I just knew that I wanted to do something different. So then, uh, during the first year that I came back in the Philippines, the first job that accepted me was a merchandising sales job in an FMCG Mm -hmm. company. It was entirely out of my expertise or whatever. I had no clue how to do it. But they accepted me anyway and they trained me for it. And it kind of opened up my eyes to the possibility of, okay, I'm not gonna give in to society telling me that if you graduated this course, this is the only thing that you should do. So that was kind of the start of my um, slow awakening. Going against the grain, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, But I wasn't aware. Like, it was just really happening. I wasn't aware that that was it. Then after that, during my corporate job, I didn't last for a year. I think I was only there for like eight months because mm-hmm. since I was in this super major quarter life crisis, I wanted mm-hmm. to study again. Okay. So I so I applied for a second course in La Salle and I took up industrial engineering. Super <laughs> layo. <laughs> super layo. <laughs> But grabe, diba? As in, like, end-to-end talaga. Like, end that to was end. how okay. Okay. Extreme, was. extreme, extreme. Oh. So whenever people would tell me, like, have you experienced quarter life crisis? I would always laugh and tell them I've done, like, the extremes of it talaga. So from mm-hmm. hotel restaurant management, I went to a corporate job in sales and marketing that I had zero knowledge about, but I, I pushed through. Then I applied for industrial engineering. So I took up the course. So I resigned from my job. Then I I went back to school. Now, when I, during the time that I was in engineering, I was still unsure. So I started to still lean towards the thing that I enjoyed doing, which is taking photos, something about marketing, but I can't really grasp 
what it was. So during my time in La Salle, while I was studying engineering, I would go to the li- to the library and borrow mm-hmm. books about photography, marketing, and events. But mm-hmm. really, at this time, I thought it was just really something that was comforting me. That's what. That's why I was doing it. And then come there, the year of 2015, I was second year. Uh, I was a second year undergrad student for industrial engineering. And then I started Discover Manila out of the blue. The the page I published it literally one night that I couldn't sleep. So I just had my phone. Okay. I was scrolling through Instagram. I had a lot of excess photos. The photos that did not make it to my personal feed. So I had a lot of mm-hmm. it. Then I couldn't sleep. I decided to make another Instagram account. I named it Discover MNL and I posted the other photos there. That was it. That was the... There wasn't really a business plan. Listen, all of a sudden, you just thought, okay, I'll make a page. I'll call it Discover ML. What were the other yes. choices? You still remember when any I other know, choices? That was, like the first, that was the first name that came to my mind. For wow. some reason, that was the first name. And it was, and it's super catchy. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> initial, my initial encounter with the page was... Kasi nga, mahilig din ako kumain. So I'm very, yeah. I'm a food addict. I'm a, I'm a, may mga affliction ko sa buhay yan. Kaya nga, kaya nga, <laughs> ang hirap mag-cut ng weight. Kasi nga, lakas ko kumain. <laughs> and one of the pages is like, discover him. And then I go like, and apparently a lot of us, okay, from the jujitsu MMA, okay, the the very uh... brusco community, you have a lot of fans. <laughs> kasi, alos lahat, pagka ganun, ano, lahat, Pagkatapos mag-weight cut tsaka mag-compete, natatawag sa kumain. <laughs> Apparently, it's parang mga lurker. Marami kaming lurker sa page ni Discover MNL. It's very Aww. fascinating. For example, itong si, yung podcast ko, si Coach Franco says, I didn't have a name. This happened, mm-hmm. the, this podcast is like five years old. When it was my students who gave me the name. Kasi, kasi, kasi they said, Every every time they would have conversation, that's always it. Because that's what Coach Franco said. That's what Coach Franco says. Eh. So, sabi, so that's the notion of all. Nakatuwa naman that, that, that you, that the process behind the name just came out of. Ano yun eh? Normally, it's, it's, it, it, it's emotion. It's intuition. Mm-hmm. Diba? It just felt right. And it felt right. Now, now with regards to Discover MNL and and the process of creating it. Now, let's go a little bit further. 